Okay, so I'm going to present the research paper entitled Characterization of Zeolite Nanoparticles Fabricated via Horizontal Vapor Phase Crystal Growth Technique for Applications in Food Packaging and Preservation. So this uh, research uh, paper, I think, was made uh, pre-pandemic and probably four or five years ago. So I did not uh, submit this to any publication because uh, one is uh, I submitted a DOST project proposal uh, for actually wastewater treatment. But uh, since the material is a potential product that uh, prevents me from uh, publishing the paper. But uh, since we are planning to do research on food packaging, uh, I believe that it's now time to present this paper, this research. So when we apply funding, uh, they know that uh, we have or we have done a research with regard to food packaging and preservation. So the objectives of the study are the following: the utilization of uh, HVPC growth technique to produce zeolite nanoparticles, the characterization of nanoparticles using SEM and uh, EDX analysis, determination of the optimum or optimal HVPC growth conditions for producing zeolite nanoparticles of desirable size, and the assessment of zeolite nanoparticles as inhibitors of microbial growth on specifically on fresh milk. Okay, so we choose fresh milk because this uh, sample uh, easily degrades. So the problem is actually the presence of toxic compounds in, in food packaging. Uh, in food materials, and also the uh, overabundance of plastic used in food packaging and the need for a better alternative. So what are the toxic chemicals present in food packaging? Number one is we have BPA. So this is an epoxy resin based food can liners. Uh, the effect is reprotoxic and carcinogen, carcinogenic hormone disruption. Then we have propyl paraben or a plastic additive. Its effect is estrogenic and anti-androgenic activity. Then we have 4 third butyl phenol. Uh, this is synthetic wrapper. Uh, and printing ink of product labels. So the effect is endocrine hormone disruption. And then we have styrene. Uh, this one is used for food packaging in uh, containers. It's a uh, mutagenic, reprotoxic, carcinogenic hormone disruption. So, uh, they have already findings that uh, plastics causes cancer. Also benzophenone. It's a coating and adhesive formulation additive. So it's carcin carcinogenic endocrine hormone disruption. You see the commonality of the hormone disruption. Then you have oxybenzone. This is a plastic uh, surface coating polymer and printed ink additives. And it's also used as a UV absorbing agent. Uh, the effect is developmental and reproductive hormonal activity. Then we have BHA, the 5 third butyl hydroxy anisole. It's an antioxidant for food preservation and uh, for food package coating. 
uh, its effect is in the thyroid and gonadal or hormone disruption. Then this one is phthalates or is used as a plasticizer. Its effect is the developmental deterioration, semen quality, testicular cancer, and endo endometriosis. So what is our proposed solution? So we're going to apply horizontal vapor phase crystal growth technique using quartz tube. So the characteristic of our quartz tube is this technique is the purity of the chemicals when it is processed. Uh, also, the quartz can withstand high temperature and actually stable when uh, the atoms are uh, depositing to a substrate. Now, the result of this is it's actually deposited in the walls when it is uh, uh, placed in a furnace. No? Now, what are the uh, nanoparticle classification? So, in terms of size, we have UFPs or ultra fine nanoparticles, which has a range of 1 to 100 nanometers. Then we have fine nanoparticles of 100 to 2,500 nanometers. And we have coarse particles, which is greater than 2,500 nanometers. So we have actually a reference if we're going to characterize our zeolite nanoparticle and will be classified in this range. So for uh, our uh, reference, zinc oxide is actually used for uh, food preservation and also uh, is used to reduce microorganisms. Uh, for ultrafine powder of less than one micrometer or greater than one micrometer, uh, Staphylococcus, for example, is the microorganism. Uh, the reduction rate is 50%. For nanopowders, between 50 to 70 is between 40 to uh, 50%. And for uh, nanoparticles, which has 8 nanometers, the reduction rate is 99%. So the smaller the size, the better. So this is the structure of our zeolite. Okay. Zeolite is actually present as a natural resource of the Philippines. So it's uh, available in the northern part of the country in Pangasinan. So you notice that uh, there are holes in the structure of zeolite. According to literature, this is where the, uh, for example, the heavy metals and uh, if it is used to filter water, it's actually trapped in these holes. Okay. So it is an inert material made from silicon, oxygen, and aluminum with a negative charge valence. And then an excellent uh, adsorbent. It's actually known as an absorbent. And uh, it is made of silicate. So what we did is uh, we use a horizontal uh, tube furnace to uh, melt our powder materials and then vaporize it uh, through diffusion, supersaturation, and nucleation growth. It will condense in the cold zone and will form our nanoparticles. So that will be our uh, process for this uh, when we produce the zeolite nanoparticle. So we uh, sonicate the quartz tube. We add uh, one gram of zeolite to each tube. 
actually that's many <laughs> then uh, we evacuate each tube and then we bake it at various temperatures we characterize and count the aerobic plate okay so we have nine tubes and we bake it at different temperatures between 1000 to 1200 at different uh, baking temperature, okay? Between 240 to 480 minutes. So this is uh, our, our uh, uh, grown nanoparticles inside the tube. And uh, we use uh, this uh, locally available fresh milk. Okay, to and uh, to test the uh, uh, the uh, effic efficacy of our zeolite nanoparticles. Okay, so for uh, standard reference, we have uh, low poly colony forming units. If it is less than two hundred thousand. In a standard plate, it's less than 5,000. And in an incubation count, that's less than 2,000. And for a lab pasteurized count, it's less than 100. And in poly, polyform count, it's less than 50. So if you have a medium, it's between 200 to 400,000. And if you have high polyform, forming unit that will be greater, greater than 400,000. So this will be our reference if we are, uh, if we effectively use the nanoparticles and classify it, whether uh, our aerobic count is low, medium, and high. Results, analysis, and discussion. So these are the grown zeolite nanoparticles form at uh, 1,200 degrees Celsius uh, magnified at 35,000 X. No? And it's actually grown in zone two uh, of sample tube three. So sample tube three and zone two has a uh, mean size or minimum size of 28 nanometers to 128 nanometers for a particle count of 70. So meaning that the, the nanoparticles that is spread here has this uh, size, okay? So, and then the mean is 5450, okay? So we can 100%, uh, it's fine particles and 97.14% with ultrafine particle. Uh, it's somewhere here. <laughs> so, but we know that uh, we have actually produced a nanoparticle no? because of the size. No? Then uh, we have uh, two four zone one, uh, magnified at 3,500. So again, the smallest size that we can measure and the biggest. So two four for a, a particle distribution of 65, the minimum size is 220 and the maximum size is 3,560. You just imagine this, this is already micron size. <laughs> Actually, this ruler is five microns, around four microns. But nanoparticles is the smallest particle that you can measure, okay? So the smallest is 220. So there's no ultra fine particles, but only fine particles, 96%. And then for two four, so take at 1000 degrees for six hours, for uh, 30, uh, now 30 counts. So the minimum is 44 nanometers. And the maximum is 201 nanometers with a magnification of 20,000. So
So also for two four for a distribution of 70, we have 66 nanometers to 590 nanometer particle size distribution. And then this is tube five. So these are the uh, in, in uh, quartz tube five zone three. Uh, it has a minimum of 56 and a maximum of 601 nanometers. So we have fine nanoparticles and 40%, 40.43% 40 uh, ultra fine nanoparticles. And then uh, for tube six, so we have uh, nanoparticles, ultra fine nanoparticles, uh, because we have a minimum of 48 nanometers and a maximum of 139 nanometers. Then for tube eight, so we have 118 to 2348. We don't have ultra fine, but we have fine. Size zeolite particles is bigger. Then uh, for tube eight for zone one, so there's no ultra fine zeolite nanoparticles, only fine size particles is bigger. So the distribution for the different tubes you know, and baking temperatures, so uh, and also the baking duration minutes. You can see the uh, graph of the, each of the tubes. So the baking duration versus the estimated marginal means of particle size for uh, 240, 360, and 480. So which means that the larger, uh, the bigger the baking duration, the, the larger the particle size is given compared to when you have a small baking duration because you can have actually less than 100 nanometers. So which means that uh, you can produce ultra fine particles if you have lesser baking duration uh, time okay, compared when you prolong the baking time. Uh, actually, it's established uh, process that we have in the lab. So also for the different zones, so because we divided it into zone one zone two and zone three so most of the ultra fine particles are are actually located in zone two and then bigger particles is in zone one and zone three is at 275 also uh, the higher the temperature the smaller uh, you can produce uh, ultra fine particles. Okay, uh, when you reduce it to, to one thousand two hundred, uh, you will get bigger particle sizes. So this is the uh, EDX spectrum graph, which actually gives you the elements found in your nanoparticles. So. Uh, according to this spectrograph, you have uh, of course silicon, presence of silicon because uh, zeolite is made of silic silicates, diba? so it's around 49.72 weight percent and atomic percent of 49.86. And then you have alumina or aluminum at 12.43 with atomic percent of 12.88 and then oxygen which is 37.85 and 37.26 for atomic percent. So aluminum silicon. So this is the aerobic plate count. So you have, uh, we have uh, three trials. So we have the control for, we have 34,000 poly forming unit per ml experimentally when it is exposed to, you know, to the uh, uh, nanoparticle it was reduced to 4000 cfu for trial 2 so we have 31 count was reduced to 3000 
43, it was reduced to 6,000. So uh, the average is 4,333.33 CFU per annum. In summary, we say that the HBPC growth technique uh, was uh, successful in synthesizing fine particles and ultra fine particles. And then the growth duration and zoning proximity are parameters that were found that is correlated with the significance of the nanoparticle morphology. And based on the aerobic plate analysis, it was shown that the zeolite nanoparticles were effective as micro microbial community inhibitor. Okay, so you have any question? Uh, sir, I just want a question. Sir, say, I did you come on coating put talaga, sir. Uh, no, we did not. We just made uh nanoparticles and then diba, you, you have your tubes diba? you have grown the nanoparticles there and then yes, uh, the microbial uh, so the, uh, the milk that is spoiled was actually poured in in the tube ah then, okay sir yeah, so so uh, from from the results in the FNRI, Food and Nutrition Research Institute, uh, they will give you first this col colony forming unit. Okay, so according to them, the spoiled meat has this. Then when it was poured in and uh, our nano -sulite, and then uh, they check again the CFU and they found that it was reduced. Ah, okay, sir. <laughs> that's that's how 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 easy the experiment is actually. So if if we compare our yeah, so so uh, we're we're actually in the range of uh, standard plate count, so it's low. So we were able to you know, prove that uh, we can actually uh, eradicate the, the uh, microbial growth. Okay. Maybe by adding more and more <laughs> nanoparticles, we can even, we can even reduce. So uh, this is uh, just a preliminary study on how efficient the uh, and uh, zeolite nanoparticles in uh, eradicating uh, microbial growth, especially in food. You know? So in the future, if the if the food manufacturer one would like to include zeolite nanoparticles as part of the ingredient of milk. Okay, by the way, zeolite is uh, edible. It's actually a mineral. You can actually eat it. It's a it's a vitamin actually. You can check on it. Okay. And it, uh... Yeah. So it's, this is not a uh, uh, but good question. Good point. Thank you, sir. You can also coat it, but uh, that's another spin off. How do you coat uh, ultra fine particles in uh, in uh, food? Huh? Okay. Sir, I have a question, sir. If if the zeolite is in its nanoparticle size, sir, will it also be an edible and does it have any you know, uh, safe, I mean, uh, effect on human body or anything, sir? Because no. we know that we know that it's yes, sir. Actually, uh, as I said a while ago, it's uh, a zeolite is actually a mineral. And it is a food additive. Okay, so it, it is safe to eat. Actually, uh, in Europe, they use it as a uh, as a vitamin. Okay, this is this is sand, no? This is sand. Okay, so but uh, of 
course, uh, that's another study if you want to uh, test the toxicity. But it is already a known fact that zeolite materials are not, not non-toxic. Okay? Oh. Yeah, it's just like eating sand. <laughs> but this is a mineral, so you, can, you cannot be poisoned. Okay? And if you eat it, you just imagine if you have microbes inside your body, it will just kill, right? That's why the, uh, there's also studies that uh, zeolite are, uh, is used as a medicine. Yes, for drug, drug, uh, drug, drug delivery. delivery. Yes, yes, I, I, but I did that. That's another research uh, wow. to prove. But uh, there are already studies that uh, do it. Uh. So this one is the first for uh, our research lab to do our first food packaging research. But uh, in, in the, the zeolite is placed inside the food, the food package. If, if they want to really pursue this, uh, this material. Okay, but because in this research, we spoiled the milk and then we pour it in the tube. And then count the poly, the colony forming unit. Very easy. Oh, sir, uh, does it also include in the study, sir, that uh, after after it was uh, after the zeolite was introduced, uh, how many hours or the duration it is effective? The the what the the effectiveness of the zeolite. I mean the. Oh, or the party, uh, I mean, the, the bacteria will not grow after. Will not grow anymore. Oh, we, we, well, the research did not uh, monitor the, if it will uh, go back again, but uh, it, it will increase, no? Uh -huh. uh, we did not uh, did that, but it's worth studying. It, it will go, it, the microbes will again grow. <laughs> so, because the research is the efficacy of, uh, uh, of nano zeolite in eradicating mm. microbes, eh? so we have proven it anyway. Nice. So, but, uh, is, uh, we have a research study on food application. Very basic, very basic. So, any more questions? On my end. Yeah, okay, thank you. I will stop the recording. Okay, kasi, uh, ano yan eh? Uh, Di pa nasa pa-recording. Ayun ba? Okay.